Hey everyone, how are you? Um, I am back with some top things to grow during the heat of our summer in Central Florida. Let's get into it. Okay, well, thanks for joining me. If you guys haven't met me yet, I am Shannon and I am in Central Florida, Zone 9B. I love to grow all sorts of plants and vegetables and food especially. Um, I use a lot of different methods. I use the green stock growing methods. I do uh, fabric pots. I do pots. I do raised beds. I do in-ground beds. So check out some of my other videos if that's some stuff you're interested in. Um, but today we're going to go over the top probably 10 to 12 things that I can grow in the heat of our summer that still thrives pretty well. So we're going to start with the first one, which is longevity spinach. It's a green. Can you believe it? In the summer of the heat of Florida, we can grow greens. So if you don't have longevity spinach, um, I highly recommend it. It does pretty well here year round. And even after you cut off the leaves, you can propagate the stem, put it into the ground and you'll have a whole new bush. I have longevity spinach all over the yard. I give handfuls of clippings to my girls, my chickens every day, um, and it still grows like crazy. It's very tasty. I use it in smoothies. I use it for cooking. I use it for all sorts of things. For me, it's a little strong to have as a salad with nothing but longevity spinach, but it's definitely nice to mix it up with some other greens. My next one to have is Okinawa spinach. This is another um, green. It's actually a purple uh, leaf on it, but it is a beautiful addition to the garden. It does really, really well in our heat. Um, same with the longevity spinach. Give it a little bit of shade during the day, um, in the heat of the day, and it will thrive for you. Same thing, you can cut off all the leaves propagate the stem, put it right into the ground, and you're gonna get a whole new plant. The Okinawa spinach doesn't grow nearly as quickly as the longevity spinach does. The longevity spinach will actually start vining on the ground and almost get away from you if you don't keep up on it. Um, but again, you can never have too much lettuce, right? My third green to have is Malbar spinach. Uh, Malvar spinach will actually start growing all over your garden. Once you start growing Malvar spinach, you kind of have a hard time getting rid of it. It seems to pop up in a lot of different areas in my yard and um, it, it's the spinach that keeps on giving. Some people say it has a little bit of a slimy texture. Um, I personally don't mind it. Like I said, I can't eat it straight as a salad, but it's fantastic for cooking or adding to some sort of mixed greens that you have. This is a vining plant, so it is going to need to to take off. Um, I actually have one started right here. I've noticed in my sunflowers that I have here that ha is a volunteer. I have many, many, many volunteers of Malvar spinach, but it's one that if you can't get rid of it, it's not such a bad thing. One other bonus that I forgot to add in, and I love, is one of my favorite greens, which is Swiss chard. It really does well in our heat, as long as you give it a little bit of shade as well. And pretty much every variety grows well here. But the best one is perpetual spinach. It gets pretty large, so it definitely needs a little bit of room. But if you don't have a whole lot of room for some perpetual spinach, then just your regular rainbow spinach does fantastic. So then we are going to move on to beans. Most beans at this point, bush beans, um, pole beans, are not going to thrive here in our heat. Um, they will do okay if you give them a little bit of shade, but the beans that do thrive in our heat and humidity are yard beans. They're long beans. Some people call them snake beans, rattlesnake beans. Um, so this is a great one that works really well. The other part is they get really long. They get about two feet long. And so you can cut them up. You only need a, 
a few of them to have a dinner for the family because you can cut them up into smaller portions. And this is another one that I've started this year. Um, this is a Thai soldier long bean from Baker Creek. This one is doing fantastic as well. The yard long bean is a little bit more prolific that I've gotten so far, but this one is fantastic. This one um, was not good when we ate it raw. This one definitely needs to be cooked in. The other um, yard long beans, this one was fantastic raw, cooked. Um, we blanched them and froze them and used them for quite a long time because these are pretty prolific as well. And I plant probably about three of these seeds and then I wait about a month, I plant three more and I have beans plenty for a long time. My next um, top thing that will grow in heat is many, many types of herbs. Um, we can grow basil like crazy right now. Um, we can grow, there's so many different types of basil. I have holy basil, I have leaf, leaf lettuce basil, I have just regular um, Italian basil, and all of them are doing fantastic in our heat. Um, I'm also getting a lot of oregano is doing very well, along with, um, why can I not remember the name of that herb? <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. But it's fantastic and it's doing really, really well as well. Great for cooking, really good if you have stomach problems and stuff to add to your dishes. But again, the list with herbs goes on and on and on. Uh, parsley does really well during our summer. Um, the only one that I don't have luck with is cilantro and dill. Um, they, they need it definitely to be a little more colder than our climate. So then after that is no surprise to anybody in Florida, but it's peppers. Peppers thrive in our heat. They love our heat, they love our humidity, um, and they do pretty well. The only thing that I run into is once we get a lot of rain, um, I do get a lot of white flies and pests on the leaves, so that's something you always just gotta look out for. But a few that I am growing this year, um, and I just did it in a pepper video, I think you guys saw some of them, but Cubanelle, this is probably one of my favorites. I pick these when they're young and they're a little bit sweeter. If you let them um, on the plant a little bit longer, they can get a little, little kick to them. But they get big and you can do nice stuffed peppers with those as well. The habanada is a new one I'm trying this year. Unfortunately, a couple of things are eating it, so <laughs> I'm not too sure how well that I'm going to be able to um, harvest on these, but we'll see. And then another pepper this year that I'm doing is the Achfarski. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, but this is another nice sweet pepper that thrives pretty well in the heat. All right, and then next on my list, believe it or not, is some tomatoes. So there's a couple tomatoes that I have found do really, really well in our heat. And one is called the Everglades tomato. I'm sure you guys have heard of this tomato, but they're really tiny, sweet tomatoes. They're in the uh, considered a currant tomato. I don't know if I'm saying that properly or not, but they're very, very tiny. The thing with them is they are so prolific, so it doesn't matter. You get so many tomatoes and it makes up for their size. The other thing with those is once you plant them, you pretty much have them forever as well, which again, isn't a bad thing because who doesn't love tomatoes all the time, especially here in Florida where we can't grow very many. The other tomato that I personally love, I love orange and yellow tomatoes. So just with trial and error and just seeing how all the tomatoes have done over the years for me, one that seems to last right through our summer is the yellow pear tomato. So although this isn't my most favorite tomato, it does thrive through our summer and who can't love that? <laughs> so I definitely keep the yellow pear tomato in my garden. So then we're going to move on to another one that is pretty obvious, but thrives in our summer heat is corn. And I know you're probably thinking you need a ton of room for corn, but you really don't. Just get yourself a pretty big size pot, maybe like about a 15, 20 gallon, and you can probably plant 
four to five, maybe even six plants in there. Um, you want to plant them in a block because the tassels need to uh, blow in the wind and pollinate the corn. Um, but how fun to be growing your own sweet corn right in your backyard. So corn is another one that's a really great summer crop, loves our heat and thrives through our heat. Which then leads me to another summer crop, which I didn't start growing until last year, but I will always grow in my garden from now on. And that is okra. I don't know why I never ever grew okra. I just kind of always thought it was one of those things that I didn't like. But um, we started growing some okra last year and it was fantastic. So this year, I have many, 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 many more plants of okra. I have many different types, such as um, this one I got from Baker Creek. This is a tinier little okra. I actually harvested my first one yesterday. So I don't like okra raw. Um, some people do. It does have a little bit of a slimy texture to it, but if you cook it in and put it into dishes, it's fantastic in soups. Um, I really love it. So you should definitely try it. If you're not growing okra, you should be. It is fabulous. And then other than that, the bonus that I can say that I'm doing a lot of this year, and maybe you guys already know this if you watch my videos, but I am growing a lot of pumpkin. Um, pumpkin loves the heat, loves our weather. Um, they love a lot of water. So and I know you're probably thinking, I don't have room for a pumpkin. I'm a small backyard gardener. There are several types that can grow in a small space, such as a sugar, um, a small sugar pumpkin. These are really great for pie fillings um, or to just cook up however you wanna um, use your pumpkin and of course roast the seeds. I mean, who doesn't love those? The other thing is more of a decorative pumpkin, but they're still really fun, is your mini harvest blend pumpkin. These stay pretty small as well and they won't take over your yard. So that's another good one. The other bonus one that I have is a watermelon. Watermelon loves our summer heat. They love water, <laughs> so they can never get too much of that until they're almost ready to be harvested. At that point, you want to cut the water off because they will just start cracking on you. And I know once again, you're probably thinking I'm a small space gardener and I don't have room for that. No, there is a type of watermelon called the sugar baby watermelon, and it is more of a personal size melon. It's, it's pretty small and the vine doesn't get out of control and you can kind of tame it to a smaller space and trellis. So I did, um, the experiment with um, growing a pumpkin for the first time in my backyard this year and I just kept it trimmed up um, on our vine on our on our trellis I just kept the vine trimmed up real nice so it just didn't get out of control um, and that one was actually a seminal pumpkin which does well in our environment obviously um, and they're fantastic for eating fantastic for roasting seeds making pies whatever you'd like to do with them I personally am using them to roast seeds. I give some to my chickens and they're also really good for your dogs if you have a dog, um, really good fiber for them. So anyways, if you guys have any more that you can think of, I would love if you place them in the comments below because I'm always looking to try some new things, but I just wanted to give you my list of things that I grow continuously throughout the year in our hot, humid summers when it gets just a little too uncomfortable out here, those plants thrive. So they're always my go-to and it, it makes you feel good going through the summer being able to see that things are actually thriving because a lot of times this is our season where many things don't grow, but I just gave you a handful of stuff that does. So once again, thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate if you like this video and if you like the content, please consider subscribing. And um, I try to put out videos as much as possible um, here in zone nine. And I also have some property that I garden on in zone eight. So please check that out as well. Uh, a little bit different of a scenario, but it's, it's awesome to be able to share with the garden community. So anyways, guys, Thanks so much for watching and following along with me and 
we will see you in the next one.